Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome back to Ree's Retro Toys. So many of you often wonder, do I only collect vintage toys or do I also dabble in the art of collecting modern toys? Well yes, I do collect modern toys. And I just primarily focused my channel on the vintage items because that's what I'm really passionate about and that's what I really like. However, there are franchises that I absolutely love and I still collect the new action figures, play sets, vehicles today, like Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, Aliens, things like that, He-Man. And as we all know, the market is currently flooded with all of the franchises that we loved as a child. You walk down the aisle at Target and Walmart and you are blasted with past memories of walking into Hills and Kmart James Way, Toys R Us, and seeing all of your favorite cartoon items and cartoon toys and comic toys on the shelves. So it's a pretty remarkable time to be a collector right now, in my opinion. Um, now granted, they are, you know, milking the cash cow a little bit because kids really don't want to play with toys much anymore. They want to play with phones and video games and electronics. And I know this because I have a six-year-old and a 10-year-old and uh, they don't play with a lot of toys at the moment. Um, so we all know that this stuff is marketed towards us, us 40 somethings that grew up with these franchises and uh, have the money now to actually go buy the stuff. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to do a few episodes on modern toys. And uh, now my channel will still primarily focus on vintage items and vintage toy hunts, so don't worry. You know, if you're not interested in the modern toys, I get it. Uh, I understand. So uh, I just wanted to do a little something different and, and dabble in the modern element of toy collecting. So without further ado, let's get to the first episode of Modern Things. So the first line I wanted to talk about was Masters of the Universe Origins. Now if you are an 80s toy fan and an 80s cartoon fan, how can you really not be collecting Motu Origins? Uh, they are such an incredible throwback to the original figures, it's astounding. And here is Trapjaw from Wave 2. So I have yet to find any of Wave 2 on the shelves at Walmart. I have never seen any of these. The only reason I got this trap jaw is because Chad found two of them on Facebook Marketplace. A guy was selling out of a warehouse and he was able to go snag them for only 12 bucks each. Um, so thank you Chad for always looking out for me because I have yet to see Manny Faces, Orco, or Scareglow let alone trap jaw, on the shelves at Walmart. Um, I know some people pre-ordered these figures on walmart.com. Some people got them, some people didn't. And some people that got them, got them pretty much destroyed and cracked bubbles, bubbles falling off, crinkled packaging. You know, typical for a retailer to be shipping action figures that way, I guess. It's almost to be expected these days. I've never found them on the shelves, and it's just one of those frustrations as a new toy collector. Where are these things? Why doesn't Mattel ship more than one case per store? You know how many people are looking for these dang things? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I was also able to find the Panther at Target. Another great looking figure. And to my knowledge, they are releasing a flocked version of Panther as well that is uh, going to be exclusive to either Target or Walmart. I'm not, I'm not sure. And again, they have that incredible artwork on the back that harkens back to that original line of Masters of the Universe. And uh, I mean, they know what they're doing here. <laughs> they pull at our heartstrings and really make us want to collect this line. I was also able to purchase Wave 3 from Big Bad Toy Store. Again, I've never seen these on the shelves at Target um, because so many people are buying them up. And so Wave 3 included uh, Merman here. 
And this is and, and Big Bad Toy Store. I got to hand it to them. They they ship for four dollars flat rate, and these arrived perfect. Uh, unpunched cards. And here's Zodak. Another great looking figure. Art on the back. And then we have Shira, the Princess of Power. Art on the back there. And Roboto. Fantastic. So, I just wish the distributors would get off their butts and actually ship more of these items. So people will be able to actually find them in stores and spend their money. I don't understand how they create this false sense of limited quantity. It's almost as if they issue like one box per store when a new wave comes out and then maybe six months later they are flooded. I mean you can walk into Walmart right now and buy 15 Skeletors and He-Man if you want and Target has them on the shelves now. Nobody needs them! We've already bought them. He-Man and Skeletor. We want the new wave. Come on, get your act together. Alright, moving on from Masters of the Universe, we're moving right into the G.I. Joe retro line. Here is Scarlet from Wave 2. Wave 2 also had Roadblock and Destro in it. And Wave 1 came with uh, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, and Baroness. I was able to find all of Wave 1, and I was able to find Destro and Roadblock from Wave 2, and, but Chad was able to find me this one in uh, Walmart. So I got the Scarlet, and then amazingly, I also was able to find Wave 3. Like brand new. This these just hit the shelves to my recollection. Um, and the, here's Duke. Um, I was talking with Hunter about this because I picked up Hunter, um, the extra Cobra Commander here that you're gonna see. And he's like, "Why is Duke screaming?" <laughs> so, <laughs> and I I just joked back and said, "Oh, well, he's in mid Yo Jo scream, I guess." So um, there's Duke and Cobra Commander. And of course they have the file cards on the back. And then awesome a Lady J. Great figure. So and, and these were brand new on the shelf. I, I the cards are great. They must have just put them out when I walked down the aisle and found these. Um, and again, so just so everybody knows, there was only one Lady J, and there were two Dukes and two Cobra Commanders. So I don't know if they short packed Lady J, because Scarlet also seems to be the one that's hard to find in Wave Two. So uh, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I find it suspicious that somebody would just walk by and only grab one Lady J if they were packed two to a case. So. Uh, maybe she's short packed, but uh, anyway, that's wave three of the retro line. And then moving on to some Ninja Turtle items, and everybody's favorite topic is NECA and their piss poor distribution and exclusive figures to uh, the big box chains drive collectors nutty. Um, but here is Zarax and Zork from the cartoon line that is exclusive to Target. And this is actually my second one. I returned the first one that I found because as we all know, NECA has quality issues, right? Uh, their figures are breaking in the package. They're breaking when people take them out and try to uh, display them or pose them. My Zarax, his horn was actually off. It was completely broken off of his head and laying in the bottom of the box. So I was pretty ticked off when I noticed that when I got him home. Uh, fortunately, I was able to find another pack and I just returned the broken one. <laughs> so using the other receipt. So, um, so there's this. And again, you know, we have collector frustrations. Why can't we take 
$53 action figures out of the box and display them without fear of them breaking? I don't know, NECA. Why? Why is that? Seriously? You can't make an action figure that looks this good, but also won't break? Give me a break. And one item that I was able to find only because it was an online NECA store exclusive because so many fans complained and griped that they couldn't find them in the stores is the Secret of the Ooze exclusive um, Toka and Razar two-pack. And I mean, I gotta hand it to them. Their molds are incredible. Incredible. I never thought I would get the likeness of Toka and Razar like this in action figure form. Absolutely incredible. Um, I'm glad that NECA, you know, at least gave us a bone and we were able to order two of these if we wanted them, uh, pre-order them. And it, they, they left the pre-order open for weeks. So they were going to make as many as people ordered. And so I got to hand it to them for that. Um, however, it seems like they're going back to just the exclusives to Walmart and Target as well as Loot Crate. Uh, Walmart having the the movie star line and then Target is having the cartoon the the classic cartoon line and speaking of loot crate um, I did a pre-order recently uh, I highly recommend you guys check out lootcrate.com they have four exclusive loot crates right now for Ninja Turtles coming up they have a movie one that includes Danny from the first movie in his uh, Sid Vicious shirt and whatnot. And then there's a cartoon one that comes with Super Dawn or um, the Dark Turtle, I'm assuming is what it is. They haven't released the picture of the Dark Turtle yet, so I'm hoping it's more of a, a cartoon version of that Dark Turtle that Donatello was. Um, and in the vintage line, we got him as Super Dawn. Um, but, uh, you know, NECA is usually you know, mimicking the cartoon series. They're not going right by the vintage line like Super 7 is. And then there's an arcade one that features Armagon, uh, the mutated shark. Uh, Armagon was also in the 2012 series of the Ninja Turtles cartoon, as well as the Archie comics. And he was obviously in uh, the Super Nintendo Tournament Fighters. So he's exclusive to a crate. And then they have a Mirage Comics crate that is going to have one of the mutated shredders uh, from issue 20 of the Mirage comics where there are uh, the three clone shredders the one with the forearms, the one with the claws, and then the little mini-me shredder. <laughs> According to the image on the Loot Crate site they have the clawed version of shredder as exclusive to the Mirage comic pack. And of course to add the exclusive figure onto the exclusive Loot Crate sets, if you ordered all four of the Loot Crates, you can get an exclusive Scrag figure. Scrag um, was one of the other humans that was in Bebop and Rocksteady's gang uh, back when they were still humans. And he was in pretty much the whole first season of the Ninja Turtle cartoon. And then in the episode, The Shredder is Splintered, he eventually gets mutated into a bat. Um, so he's coming with um, his regular human head as well as his bat head. But of course you have to buy all four of those loot crates to get that Scrag figure. I didn't. I only really wanted um, the Super Dawn or the Dark Turtle and Danny for uh, the movie line. I can go without Scrag. He's not that of an important character for me to actually go for that exclusive and spend another hundred dollars to get that extra figure. I just didn't care too much about it. So anyway, look out for those Loot Crate figures. If you're interested, uh, they have the pre-orders open right now. And one last item I wanted to discuss, because I've been rambling a lot, and I don't even know if anybody's really watching anymore at this point. So here is the stunning Steve Austin Elite figure. Now, we all know Stunning Steve as Stone Cold Steve Austin, but in his WCW days, when he was miserable and extremely unhappy being there, he was known as Stunning Steve. He had a 
singles career as well as a tag team career with Flying Brian Pillman as the Hollywood Blondes. And so I don't always collect the elite figures from Mattel because I'm much more interested in the older wrestlers from the 80s and 90s. However, when they come out with something like this, it, it just hooks me. I, I just have to buy it. So, um, so that's stunning Steve Austin. All right, that's it, guys. So that's you know what I wanted to talk about here for the first episode of Modern Things. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, you guys are so used to me doing vintage, uh, vintage toys and, and collectibles that I just kind of wanted to dabble in the modern stuff for a little bit. You know, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you can at least empathize with some of my rants if you are collecting these modern toys. Give this episode a like if you enjoyed it uh, and give me your feedback if you want to see more of these or do you, uh, give me your honest opinion. Do you want me to just stick with vintage stuff or you know if you enjoy these modern things episodes let me know. Let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm really interested. Be sure to subscribe to my channel at Reese Retro Toys for all of your toy hunting needs. And seriously, thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best. Keep on hunting.